recording. Good morning. We welcome you to God's house and we pray the Lord's blessings on our worship service this morning. Today we are following the office of Matins for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. And so we invite the congregation to join us for our opening hymn, verses uh, 1 and 2 of 496, Holy Spirit, Light Divine.
The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. And the one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. While one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to me. So then, each of us will give an account to himself, of himself to God. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. o Lord. Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold and his wife and his children with him and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servants fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me, and should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. We now join together confessing our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was there. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven 
and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. Through a mortgage company, 
because we don't have the money to pay for it in full. So in closing, we claim that we own the home, but in actuality, we do not in fact own the home. The finance company does. And you also need a car to get around to go to work, to handle all of your affairs. And you usually have to buy those over time too because cars often are too expensive to pay cash for. So debt has become more and more prominent in the lives of Americans. Credit cards are very easy to get and debt is really easy to run up. But sometimes it can be not so easy to pay back but we have to pay back the debt. If we just don't make our car payment, they come and take the car. If we don't pay for our house, they come and take the house away and make us leave. If we don't pay for the credit cards, they take away our privilege of and our ability to get a loan in the future. So each and every single month, our earthly creditors send us a bill and tell us, pay up. Well, it just so happens that this idea of paying up is a prominent theme in the Gospel Lessons Day from Matthew 18. In the text, you heard Jesus tell a parable that gives us quite a bit of insight into the mind and the heart of God. So Peter asked the question, regarding how often he should keep forgiving his brothers and sisters. And in response, Jesus tells a parable about a slave who owed this enormous debt to his master. Naturally, as it always does, the time came for the master to collect the payment. So when the slave was unable to pay up, the master ordered him and his family to be sold to try to raise the money. But the slave begged for mercy. And the master showed mercy. The master forgave the slave's debt. But then that same slave met a fellow servant who owed him a debt that was significantly smaller. And instead of showing his fellow servant the forgiveness he received, the slave commanded his friend to pay up and when his friend couldn't pay, the slave rejected his pleas for mercy. He choked his friend and had him thrown in jail. Well, word got out of this. It made its way back to the master who delivered that servant over to the jailers until the debt would be paid. And since the debt was so enormous, that would have been an eternal sentence. Now to make it kind of worse, the Greek word that's used there for jailers can also be translated as tormentors. So the fate of that slave was going to be the bleakest of the bleak, eternal torment. Now it's important that we understand exactly what Jesus is trying to say. Jesus is not lecturing us on proper personal financial decisions, although he likes it when we're wise with our finances. Jesus is not advocating for the practice of debtor's prison, but instead he's talking about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very crucial part of the Christian life because each one of us has a debt that we have to deal with with God. Not a financial debt because we don't owe God money, but it's a debt of sin. And just like all the other debts, the debt of sin is not going to just somehow magically go away. We can't just forget about the house payment or the car payment, because if you do that, that brings about consequences. And in the same way, you can't just ignore your sin debt, because doing so would bring about eternal consequences of the greatest nature. So, like always, when Jesus tells a parable, there is an underlying message that he wants us to hear and understand. And it's the same thing today. Jesus is describing an unpaid debt to us in earthly terms, but in reality, he's talking about the debt of our sinfulness. In the parable, the slave is our human sinful nature, and the master in the parable is God. 
Now, when you revisit the parable, the first thing to take note of is the slave's debt. The text said he owed the master 10,000 talents. Now, sitting here today in 21st century America, you have no idea how much 10,000 talents is. But if you run it through economic conversion charts and inflation calculators, 10,000 talents in Jesus' day is equal today in American dollars of just over $3 billion. So on a slave's salary, there's absolutely no way that this debt could ever possibly be repaid. It's just simply too high. Just like our sin debt to God. By nature, we're so sinful that it's absolutely impossible to think we could ever settle the ledger with God. When we look at how enormous the slave's debt is, we begin to understand the depths of our sinfulness and the level of depravity of our sinful nature. If we stop and think about every command that God gives and that we owe God in a sort every time we break a command in thought, word, or deed, it would take no time at all to rack up quite a substantial debt. Think about all of the Ten Commandments. God tells us to never worry. God tells us to always forgive no matter what. God tells us to rejoice in our trials. And we're not very good at doing any of these things. So if God came to address our sin debt with us and said to us, pay up, our situation would be as hopeless as that slave's. And the faith would be the same. Handed over to eternal torment. But something happened that changed your eternal destiny. That sin debt of yours wasn't ignored. It was actually addressed. God the Father did rise up and demand payment. But when the Father said, pay up, somebody stood up in your place. Somebody willingly chose to take on that impossible debt for you. Somebody loved you enough to save you from that horrible fate. And that somebody was your heaven-sent Savior, your Lord Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus, when God demands payment and you beg for mercy, you will be shown mercy. The slave said in verse 26, Have patience with me and I will pay you everything. Well, the slave never could have paid everything, but the point is that when we beg accordingly, God knows that our debt likewise could never be repaid. But notice that the slave owner in the parable didn't negotiate some sort of payment plan. He didn't work out some kind of backroom deal. He just simply forgave the whole thing. He didn't ask for repayment at all. He just said, forget it. You're forgiven. And you will receive mercy in the same way. Not because God's going to choose just to forget it. But you're going to receive mercy because the debt that couldn't possibly be paid was paid. Jesus paid your sin debt with the Father and he paid it in full. He didn't use money. He didn't cut a deal. He didn't co-sign a loan. Instead, he retired the sin debt of the entire world with something much more valuable than those things. Jesus paid for all of your sins by the shedding of his own blood. You see, Jesus loved you enough to buy your way out of hell and into heaven. And he did so by paying the ultimate price for everyone. Anybody could write a check. But Jesus gave his very life so that you would live forever through him. You have been rescued from eternal torment and given a room in the kingdom of heaven for all eternity. It's waiting on you right now by the mighty hand of God through the saving death of his son on the cross. Jesus willingly chose to take all of your sins on his shoulders. Every sin you have ever committed or ever will commit, Jesus took upon himself and died with all of it. And what did that cost you? 
absolutely nothing? What price did you have to pay? Not one thin dime. You have received salvation and you received it at no cost to you whatsoever. God calls you his children because you believe in his son as Lord and Savior. You have been given holiness and righteousness and now are deserving of heaven, but you were made that way because of the blood of Jesus alone. Your sin debt has been retired. Now God gave and God continues to keep giving. In your baptism, you received the gift of the Holy Spirit, that helper that God promised to send. And the Holy Spirit causes us to believe in Jesus as Lord, causes us to repent. The Holy Spirit causes us to love God with all of our hearts and all of our souls, and causes us to love our neighbors as ourselves. So thanks to the Holy Spirit, now we hear God's word, we give him thanks and praise for paying our sin debt, and we gladly honor his commands. So now, when somebody wrongs us, our sinful flesh is going to react the way the slave did in the parable, showing absolutely no mercy for our fellow man in spite of the mercy that God has shown us. In the parable, you should understand the absurd disparity in the debts. The servant was forgiven a debt of over $3 billion, yet he wouldn't forgive a debt of 100 denarii, which in today's American money is about 50 bucks. But that's not who we are as children of God. The Holy Spirit enables us to act like Joseph did from the Old Testament. As you heard, he set aside any hard feelings because of the injustice of it all that was done to him, and he simply forgave and loved. By the power of the Holy Spirit, a redeemed child of God has the love of Christ in their heart, so we gladly forgive. So go joyously today, knowing that your sins have been forgiven and they're remembered by God no more. So when God the Father reviews your sin ledger, because of Jesus, he will proclaim your debt paid in full. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until the second coming. Amen. We rise for the singing of hymn 941.
the sanctuary. So please feel free to leave your offering in the plate on your way out if you did not do so on your way in. And uh, we thank you for your continued support. And we also thank those of you who are watching us online right now. Uh, if our worship services have been a blessing to you in any way, please prayerfully consider supporting our ministry here at Trinity Lutheran Church and School. There are two ways you can do so. Uh, one, at our website, trinitymontmart.org, there is a one-click uh, link to our giving portal, and you can give that way. Or you could continue to send an offering to our office, which is located at Trinity Lutheran Church and School, 1165 South West Four Myers Road, Lombard, Illinois, 60148. And we very much thank you for your ongoing support. We continue with the Kyrie.
Arnie Schumacher for a medical procedure he's having this coming week. Norman Arlene Iverson. Ray Ely. Nathan Lachucky. Ron Nordman. Bob Garrett. Steve and Marjorie Klein. Ken Crozy. Scott Norris. Mark Ferris. Gene Wagner. Margie Wagner. Robert DeYoung. David Craigie. Sally Larry. Caroline Orderu. Lorraine Bain. And those who we name in the privacy of our own thoughts at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Giving Lord all good things come from you. Open our hearts to be generous with the poor and bring to you the tidings and offerings that you were due. That your church and all of our agencies may serve your gracious purpose and suffer no lack of people or resources to do the work of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. And Almighty and everlasting God, deliver us from temptation and the powers of evil, that we may be faithful unto death and receive from your hand the crown of everlasting life. Whether we live or whether we die, we belong to you, and we pray you to comfort us with this promise, that we may join the company of the saints on the day you have appointed, and enter into the heavenly places to worship at your throne on high. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance would be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And please be seated for our dismissal hymn number 760, What God Ordains is Always Good. Thank you.
to you with this slide, and thank you for watching us over the internet. Uh, we pray that hearing God's word of mercy and forgiveness will be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path as you go about the rest of your week. A uh, couple of announcements. Starting tomorrow night, we are uh, reconvening our Monday night worship services, 7 p.m. every Monday night. Uh, same social distancing uh, measures in place on Monday night as there are here on Sunday mornings. And also, this coming week, our weekly uh, adult Bible study is moving from Thursday night at 6 p.m. Central to Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Central. So uh, please plan accordingly and join us for that as well. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Yes. On October 22nd here in the evening, we will be hosting one of the remote sites for Caring Network Illinois' 39th annual banquet. Uh, the banquet's kind of reinvented. It's not a dinner. It will be a presentation. And we will be welcoming people from our congregation and outside with social distancing here in our parish hall to hear the keynote speaker, Dr. Jer I'm sorry, Dr. David Jeremiah, via a remote hookup. And um, we would love to have you join us here. We've typically had a lot of people from Trinity attend the banquet at Drury, and it's a little different this year, but we've agreed to participate as one of the host congregations. Please let me know today if you have any interest. It's in the evening at 7 o'clock, October 22nd. All right, very good. Anyone else? Yes, Eric.